Hello and welcome to the 411 show. My name is Chris and I'm 16 years old. This show is run by youth, hosted by youth, and aimed to inform you. We will also be showcasing a diversity of young local talent from around San Antonio. Today's guest will be... Hi, I'm Ashley and I'm 15. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Today's show, we'll be discussing biological agents. With the current emphasis on the war on terror, we have all heard about the fear of bioterror attacks. Several, several books have been written on this topic now, and some of them are even on the book list for school to do reports on. For example, the terrifying book, The Hot Zone, by Richard Preston. This has become a very famous book that introduced the world to bioagents and what harm it can do to animals and humans. But what are biological agents? How did they come to be? How can you be exposed to them? And what is being done to protect us from them? Let's admit it. We have all heard of biological agents, but only a few know the true meaning of what biological agents are and what, why we should be concerned. Biological agents are chemicals and organisms that increase the rate at which natural biodegradation or breakdown occurs. In other words, biological agents are natural born diseases that can cause severe allergic reactions and serious medical conditions, even death. They include bacteria, viruses, fungi, other microorganisms, and toxins. Biological agents are widespread in the natural environment. They are found in water, soil, plants and animals. They can come from any part of the world and there may be new ones out there that have not been discovered yet. Bioagent strains strands are named after the location they have been discovered. And the worst part is that they spread rapidly and don't need many things to survive. Biological agents thrive on few resources so we will discuss what some of the bioagents are and some examples that we have had in did you biological agents were before now and which ones are you familiar with and have maybe read about? Well, um, actually, until I started doing a little bit of research, I really didn't know what they were. Um, I knew, I had heard the name, or what they caused, if it was an actual disease, but it's actually a classification. And I'm familiar with quite a few of them, anthrax, and I'm not sure, biological agent in the birds. And then from the West Nile virus, and then you have a few other things like plague, which was from a very long time ago, and I think it just about came back too. So, yes, I was a little familiar with them. Oh, okay. Now, as we have learned, biological agents can be very contagious, which means that they can spread quickly. They can even cause death. Some example of biological agents are, as you said, anthrax, avian flu, plague, smallpox, and the West Nile virus. Have you heard of any of these or other viruses or diseases? And did you know that they were classified as biological agents? Well, I didn't know they were biological agents, um, but I still wasn't, I knew that they were all under that one big umbrella of biological agents, but I still didn't know exactly what biological agents were. Yeah, I also, I, I've heard about anthrax and smallpox and the West Nile virus from school, and I didn't get under biological Let's talk about anthrax. It's a white powdery substance that looks a lot like baby powder. It has been spread by terrorists through letters in the Postal Service here in the U.S. and Iraq. It is reported to have attempts to attain it as a bioweapon. Other than this information, what do you know about it? Anthrax is a disease, um, and I know it's from spore forming, so um, you can get it in coming in contact with anthrax and infected animals or anthrax and infected animal food or food, it's really easy to get actually all I have to do is really inhale it. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's very, very contagious. I mean, all you have to do is inhale, inhale it, um, possibly eat it, drink it, or um, it can be absorbed into your skin in an open wound. I know this is common in animals. I know many of them have anthrax and so that is also a big thing that maybe if you eat one of the animals who have that disease, it could be pretty deadly. Yeah. In October 2001, five workers died from inhaling anthrax and, and an additional 13 workers developed an inhalation disease as a result of international terrorist activity. In most cases seen so far, 
the disease was linked to unexpected workplace exposures to anthrax spores containing in letters mailed through the U.S. Postal Service. Terrorists have threatened our country with biological agents such as anthrax. What are some of the ways, other than through letters, that you think it could be spread through the human population? Well, actually, if you think about it, letters is a really easy way to, um, especially if you're at a workplace. But um, if you think about it, an easier way to do it is to just simply put it into an air conditioning system. I mean, that way it's it's all over a building, and, and it's really sad to think about. But you can you can people can inhale it very easily. So if you put it into a building air conditioning system, or, or you know, it mm -hmm. that's a really easy way to spread it. And then also. You put it in a drink, slip it in somebody's uh, food, if you're possibly a restaurant worker. Or, you know, so food, drink, breathing, any way, it's really, really easy to catch. Yes, and um, because it, you can get it from inhalation, I mean, it's actually very easy. You could probably put it in maybe a balloon or, and let it go, and if it pops and people inhale it, well, that's a very easy way. But don't get any ideas. Okay. How would you suggest that the situation be avoided in the future or how we could possibly protect, possibly be protected from an intentional spread of anthrax? Well, all I could really think of to tell you is for everybody to possibly take an anti-anthrax vaccine or, you know, a shot that to where, you know how you have hepatitis A, hepatitis B, mm -hmm. you know, everybody takes shots for certain things that can come around and that can even possibly kill a person. You know, it's... Um, if they possibly found something that that you could take, even like a pill, if you were exposed to anthrax, that you wouldn't have any effects, symptoms, that would be, I mean, that would be a really great thing. Or it could try to find a way to uh, possibly destroy anthrax. And I know um, because it's an inhalation disease, you could probably wear a mask or one of those masks that you can wear to for, like for the air so it can be ventilated and clean so that is another way and I know many people probably won't think about it that much but this is a very serious situation now avian flu it's a highly contagious disease that birds make which currently has an outbreak in Asia despite the uncertainties poultry experts or bird experts agree that an immediate death of infected and exposed birds is the best way of def defending humans and reaching in further losses of the agricultural sector. Do you think it's fair to kill these birds or should they be held in captivity to prevent spreading of the disease or what other suggestions do you have? Well I definitely think it, it's wrong to to kill birds and a lot of these birds I mean they're being killed and they they're not even the people that are killing them aren't even sure if they actually have, if the birds actually have the avian flu. So um, th what they're trying to do is to try to um, keep it from, from, the, uh, from the disease going on to, into the human species. Um, but I still think it's wrong to just kill birds. Maybe if they could all give the birds a vaccine, um, try to find a way to, to destroy that, that biological agent. Or another good way is to definitely put them into captivity. It's not their fault that they, that they caught this disease. And, and even though it's contagious, it's, it's still not very fair for the birds. It's, it's not their fault. So I think that it's a very good idea to just keep them all in one place, you know, in captivity and um, separate from all the other birds that are actually healthy and don't have the avian flu. Yes, well, I know it's going to be hard to actually locate all the birds that do have the the avian flu and so hopefully as many could be caught as possible I know this is a serious problem because not knowing basically means that you probably cannot find every single bird who has the mm -hmm. disease